few weeks ago, I had created a planet Earth on a medium sized planet in Planetary Life, and I was really struggling with the terraforming. So I decided to start over with a big rocky planet and a small moon. Now, the first thing I do is go into the moon and just nuke it with a bunch of meteors because I wanted to create a bit of a crater effect, but I didn't really bother much. I just wanted the planet to have a moon and that's it. Then I headed onto the planet Earth and of course I made sure that there is no volcanic activity because I want total control and I also put a meteor shield and using the altitude map I started lowering land to create the spaces of where the ocean should be. So you can see from the map on the right I kind of started with the Pacific Ocean or Atlantic. I, I may be Atlantic, yeah it's Atlantic. See I don't know my geography that much so you have to bear with me throughout this video. You can see I created a bit of water around what could be Australia and I continued carving about the water let's say around the American continent and of course this is a very fast forwarded video <laughs> yeah it took me way longer than you actually see in this video of course I did have some issues with where some land was created so you can see I've created too much water like pretty much no Australia right now um, the American continent is very small but then I started creating elevations like Greenland and like the areas of Canada and USA so I, I created a bit of more mountainous areas especially with Greenland it makes sense and with America obviously you have to very carefully divide between North, Central and South America which is very challenging like I'm not really sure how to best do that obviously I'm switching between like the rays and lower land tools I'm trying to use the smaller for some refinements yeah for example the west side of South America is a bit more elevated and if we look at the minimap I know it's not perfect but it is hard working with a sphere shaped planet while you have a square map because you realize kind of like Russia which now I'm working on it's pretty much connected to the Americas it's just so close and like you don't see that from an actual map but once you get to work on a planet it gets a bit rough now here I'm working a bit on the Mediterranean and the Nile and then going back to recreate Australia which I've sunk in at some point See, Australia is not a large mass, but then it is very close to some Asian countries. I'm bad at geography, so I won't be naming the countries that I'm creating, but this is Madagascar, so I do know a bit, okay? And once I'm done, I switch to normal mode. Now, this bug kind of resolves already um, in a future patch, but essentially where you're seeing the blue, that is where it is completely minus five kilometers. It's the lowest possible. And now that I've created the land, all I needed to do was actually add water. So I started doing that with the raised water tool. Because it is a big planet, it did take a very long while. I did try to change some albedos to try and match the temperature a little better. But I did have a lot of water to add and it got tiring. It, it took me like three times longer than the smaller planet. Now here I was trying to create the water for the Nile to separate Australia from the Asian countries. I did want to try and increase the water level to make sure that it's fine and obviously then I had to create the South Pole. I had to adjust the South America because it wasn't really placed well. And then I started raising water and that created a bit of snow and icy terrains. In some places it also created a bit of like lakes, which I wasn't in love with. I continued to add water on the land to kind of hope to create moisture. Where there was ice, like in Brazil, where I wasn't expecting ice, I had to flatten or lower the land a bit. I had to adjust the African continent because it wasn't shaping quite right. I mean, granted, nothing is shaping right, 
but at least it looks better. And then I had to match Europe's kind of Portugal and Spain to make sure um, they're aligned with Africa. I created a little bit of a tent for um, Italy and a little island for the UK, even though there's technically more islands. And then continue adding more water, hiding a bit of the bumps, making sure the Nile River is full of water. Overall, I think I am satisfied with the structure of this planet. It is sufficiently Earth-like. It's not perfect, but it is something that you can recognize as Earth from like the topography. If, if we look at it like that, right? Please be generous with your criticism here. <laughs> This was the first step-ish. Now, because I wanted to create plants and animals without mutation, I did lower the mutation rates to a 0%. Uh, that means I have full responsibility of the life forms on this planet. And I started by creating plants. And the first thing, because I'm living in the Mediterranean, I wanted a tree that I'm kind of a bit familiar with. I want to like a cypress tree. And I'm actually really pleased with how I feel like I could make it. I think that's actually one of the disadvantages of this game where everything ends up looking like a tree. But I'm really happy with the tree that I created. As soon as I move this, I realize it does require high moisture and humidity and I don't have that in the Spanish country that I've created. And because of the moisture, I had almost given up. Then I had the idea of using the humidity artifacts to increase the moisture. However, I made a mistake and did not record a whole gaming session. So here what you're seeing is some basic animals just to create the nitrogen ox... nitrogen ox... yeah. That gas, the first one. <laughs> and I created... Um, the cactus plants for Africa, because I love cacti. I love cacti. I love. The, I, I see them a lot in the Mediterranean. And then I created a kind of an autumn tree for America, because I love having a bit of orange and I didn't want everything to be green. There I did make a mistake where I wanted to create a bit of like coral plants in the sea, and they did move onto the land. So that's where you see a bit of coral coloring. Now, I did want to evolve the cactus to be requiring no moisture whatsoever, so it can expand a bit further. And then, with the plant life kind of existing, I did try to kill the species and start evolving my own creatures and created the clam. Then I went and created a scorpion kind of for the African desert, because I love scorpions. I mean, not, not that I love, love them, but I feel like they're cool and I know I could create the stinger. However, I realized without animals to prey on, it won't survive. Then I had a look at the clam, which also died. And I realized that's my time with this Earth-like planet. It's hard to make something realistic. I love this game. I love creating a bit more fictitious stuff, but creating Earth is not for me. So if you have any comments on what I should have done, let me know. But for now, Earth is no more and we return to fictional planets. Thank you for watching.